Hey, what's happening, guys? We are back with part two on our tiny little series of rotary encoders. And I've got everything set up here. If you remember in part one, we talked about how there are two uh, encoding disks in here, and they output a pulse train slightly out of phase of each other. And what that does is that allows us to know... I'm adjusting my mic, sorry. The virtual position of this switch, whether it has gone clockwise or counterclockwise. And also there is a click switch in there that we can use for various functions. So what I've done today is I've rigged it up with the Nano and this OLED to use as a display. Now it looks like there's a lot of wires here, but there's really not. We've got five volts in ground coming out of the Arduino, five volts in ground going into the OLED, five volts in ground going into our encoder. Now the OLED is I squared C, so we have two wires going to A4 and A5. Now our rotary encoder, channel A and channel B, go to pins 2 and 3, and the switch goes to pin 8. That's it. It's really that simple to hook everything up. This, this is a, an incredibly easy component to use, and the code's really easy too. Now we could simply do digital reads of pins 2 and 3, and maybe will catch you turning it. If you're not turning it at the time when the, when the uh, sketch is looking for a digital read on those pins, then you're not going to get it and you're going to miss it. So the way to make sure that we always get our reads when we want them is to use an interrupt. And using an interrupt is simply telling the Arduino, monitor this pin all the time. So between every other clock cycle, not every other, but between every clock cycle, when it's done doing something, then it goes and looks. Then it does something else and checks and keeps coming back and checking to see if there's been any change here. So that's a surefire way to make things work. You're still going to have bounce because this is no matter what a switch. And unfortunately with rotary encoders, if you try and twist them really fast, they tend to skip a couple. And I'll show you that. Now, let's go take a look at the code. I didn't write this code myself. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. A great YouTuber named Ralph Bacon, who has a ton of Arduino videos, wrote this code. So I'm borrowing his code. Thanks, Ralph. Okay, let's take a look at the code for our rotary encoder sketch. Now, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. A great YouTuber named Ralph Bacon originally wrote this sketch. And I'll put a link down below to his YouTube channel. Okay, two libraries. The wire library, because the display we're using is I squared C, and of course the driver for it. A little bit of setup for our OLED. That's all that is. Now we're going to define some things here. Our two output pins from the rotary encoder called pin A and pin B, they're going on digital 2 and digital 3. The switch is going to digital 8. Now, Ralph used a, a LED in his sketch. I didn't use it, but I'm leaving it here in case you want to use it. And then we need a variable to keep track of where the counter was. So we'll just pick a number and 50 is fine. So now we're going to do an interrupt. Okay. And this will be, this will be updated by the interrupt. So here is our interrupt. The ISR, interrupt subjects, interrupt service routine. And we've got a couple variables going on here. Last interrupt time is zero, and interrupt time is milli. So that's our current time. Now we want to watch out for switch bounce. So we say if the time is less than five milliseconds, meaning that dial's really spinning, then we're going to assume it's a bounce and ignore it. If not, and if pin B is low, then we know our virtual position is decremented. Otherwise, if it's high, then our virtual position is incremented. Now we're just going to restrict the value here, no big deal, and keep track of how long ago we checked it so that we know that bounce time is good. Now that's our interrupt. We'll come back to that. Okay, for the setup here, we always have serial begin for uh, debugging. And then we're going to set our two pin modes as inputs. Our switch gets an input pull up. And we need to attach an interrupt routine. Digital pin to interrupt, pin A, ISR low. 
So pin A, this is where it's looking for the interrupt. This is the name of the interrupt, and this is what it's looking for. Rising edge, falling edge, change, or a low digital signal. This is all set up for our OLED, no big deal. Then we come down here to our main loop, and it checks, is somebody pressing the switch? Okay. So if the switch is pressed, then it resets our virtual position, and it prints out reset on the display. Now we're going to check and see if anything has been changed. So if virtual position does not equal last count, then we need to change some things. And that's what we do right here. Virtual position is greater than last count. We say either up or down. And then we display the virtual position and keep track of it. So you can see how those changing high and low digital signals are able to show us whether this knob is being rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. And now you've got a good uh, interrupt routine to input into your sketches. All right, so you've seen the code we've uploaded it. Let's plug her in here and see what happens. Okay, it says start. And then if I press the switch, it says reset. So now we should be at a position of 50. That's our virtual position. And if we turn the knob in one direction, it goes down. So if that was three clicks, we're down to 47. If I go three clicks in the opposite direction, we should be back to 50. And if I keep turning that direction, it goes up. Now, what happens if I try and spin it really fast? Let's go back to 50. Oops. See, we already missed one. I'm going to try and really spin it. I didn't get it. Hold on. There. That was probably 10 or 12, and we only got two. So as long as you spin it at a, at a reasonable rate, there's no problem at all. And it works great. So that's going to finish us up for our little series on rotary encoders, and now you know how to use them. Thanks for watching. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Mm -hmm.